education advocate serving as the dean of students access and success with madison college he is responsible for <coughs> excuse me oversight of various student service units such as financial aid veterans benefits academics advising career and employment retention initiatives and student employment programs and directing the success of college-wide programs and initiatives such as Scholars of Promise, Financial Literacy, and Emergency Funding. KMI has achieved success with well-established institutions and associations such as the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, Great, Great Lakes Higher Education Corporation, the Wisconsin Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators, WASPA, the Midwest Association of Student Aid Financial, Financial Aid Administrators, and the U.S. Department of Education Office of Federal Student Aid through leadership, uh, through leadership training and programmatic efforts. During the 2021, 2020 and 2021 term, KMI served as the president of WASFA, leading the executive and strategic affairs of the association with Wisconsin, within Wisconsin. KMI is going to speak to us um, about um, how uh, diversity education and is, is helping with the educational efforts at uh, Madison College. So, uh, <coughs> cool. has something here for unmute myself? Do I have to? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mani, I will let you take her over. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be with you on this this afternoon to be able to share our efforts that we're performing here at Madison College. I do have a brief presentation that I am going to share my screen with you on today. That's gonna to help guide our conversation today. And of course, if you have questions that surface during your time with us or my time with you on today, feel free to let me know what those questions are and I can respond to them. So let's go ahead and get started. Of course, again, I do, I believe all of you should be able to see my screen by now. If you can just shake your head and let me know that. All right, see so you shaking here. Awesome. So again, thank you again for the opportunity um, to be with you. Uh, my name is Dr. Kimani Alford. I serve as the Dean of Student Access and Success here at Madison College. I've been at the college for approximately about four years, nine months. January will mark that fifth year for me. Um, but I have been in higher education a little bit over 21, 22 years, um, starting my time at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, where I actually started as a federal work study student in 1999. Um, seems like yesterday as far as how time has passed. But it has given me an opportunity to truly understand some of the challenges that students face in the post-secondary environment and some of the things that institutions can do to position themselves and this is to be able to support students overall. So in my time here at Madison College, I thought it would be good to begin our conversation because I definitely think it's critical to understand Madison College as a whole, but in also identify as far as our impact in the higher education landscape. So as a technical college within a community college culture, we are a leader in affordable quality education and provide flexibility, well, in my eyes, and since in our learning platforms, offering online, hybrid, and on-campus classes. So the average student whose goal is to earn a bachelor's degree can actually save $15,000 a year by starting with us at the community college level or sector and then advancing to that four-year institution. We have approximately seven campuses throughout our district. There are 16 colleges within the um, Wisconsin Technical College system, where Madison Area Technical College is one of those um, spanning over various um, areas or cities within our particular district. So some of our campuses that you'll be familiar with is Fort Atkinson, Reedsburg, um, our Goodman South Campus, our Portage Campus, and then also our um, Watertown campus as well, just to give you an idea, as well as our largest campus, which is our Truex campus here in the Madison area. Um, Madison College is first in college transfers to UW-Madison, so we provide 
that vehicle for students that are truly looking to get that four year degree with UW Madison to start with Madison College and then advance um, their aspirations and their goals for educational attainment. So I thought it would be befitting to give you some additional context regarding Madison College and our student body, as well as who we represent as far as gender and ethnicity as well. But over the span of three years, the minority student population has been growing at Madison College for degree seeking students. Last year, during the 2021 academic years, minority students represented about 26% of our student population. This year, we are close. So this year, the 21-22 um, academic year, we're close to almost 30% representing the minority students um, in attendance at Madison College. We know that within Madison, that is growing as well. Um, and we're seeing that as far as transcend over into our overall college experience and student body for our students. Um, enrollment overall for our 2018-19 year was about 30,000 students. And it has been decreasing um, a little bit over the time as far as, as we're impacted by the pandemic and students making decisions as far as what they want to do college-wise. But for right now, as far as the 2021, our enrollment was roughly about 26,876 students for this past academic year. Now, when we look at as far as age makeup, for our students, the average age of our student body is 29. Um, we are finding more non-traditional students coming back to our school for training or career needs. So it kind of speaks to that average age for our students overall. But for 2021, 39% of all students, so about 29,301, were between the ages of 23 to 39. This is 2% higher than the previous academic year. And the information here helps to really to identify as well as how the pandemic has impacted our traditional high school students. If you look at this, um, this chart here, looking at 2019, for the students that are 22 and under in comparison to 2021, you'll see that it dropped significantly about 2,000 students. That's because we found out through conversations with many of our students across the country that students decided to take a gap year before coming to college because they were unsure as far as what was transpiring with the pandemic. So many students across the country have decided to basically just take that year off before making their decisions and since to come back to college. So thinking about this a little bit more and understanding as far as the gender makeup um, of our students who take classes at Madison College, approximately 43% are male and 56% are female. Now the male population has seen a small decrease, about 1% from the prior academic year, while the white female population or while the female population has increased by 1%. Um, so it, it kind of goes back and forth regarding the male and the female population at, at our institution, but it does give you an idea specifically as far as what genders are attending in school. And at Madison College, the female student is the majority here um, with us. So when we look at credit status, um, as far as when it comes into the two-year structure, it's often a mix of enrollment um, due to the need of students. So nationally, 46% of community college students are full-time. So this is 12 credits or more, while 54% are part-time. So that's those students that are 11 credits or less. At Madison College, during the 2021 academic year, 26% of our students were full-time and 74% were, uh, were part-time. Full-time students dropped by 2% um, in 2019, 2020 as compared to 2020, 2021. So it's roughly about 28% difference from last year in comparison to our most recent data that we have here for the 2021 academic year. So persistence and retention. Um, we know that this is one of 
the staples to any institution. If you don't have students that stay at your institution, you can't have an institution because eventually you're not going to have any students to teach or to educate or provide services to. But when we're looking at this specifically, looking at data from 2011 to 2020, and how students persist from semester to semester, and how they are retained from year to year, it is notable that our students of color are persisting and being retained at lower levels than their white peers. So when looking specifically at this data, um, our white students persisted at 74%, while they were also retained at 67.2%. When we look at our Black students, they persisted at 57.5%, so that's 16.5% lower than their white peers, and they were retained at 50.9%, which is 16.3% lower than their white peers. When we're looking at our Hispanic or Latinx population, they persisted at a rate of 68.9%, which is 5.1% lower than their white peers and 11.4% higher than their black peers. They were retained at 63.2%, which is 4% lower than their white peers and 12.3% higher than their black peers. So it gives you an idea as far as those three populations of students and how they are persisting at our institution. Now, as demonstrated on the previous slide, um, retention and persistence is a challenge for many institutions. Um, so it's the same, of course, with Madison College. However, these two factors also impact graduation rates as well. So when reviewing graduation rates, we know that our female students are graduating at higher rates than our male students. So white female students are graduating or have a graduate um, ratio of 41.1% and which are graduating at 10% higher than white males at 31.8%. Black females are 17.0%. Um, um, at a 2% lower rate than their Black males, which is at 19.0%. Hispanic females, 26.8% graduate at 6% higher than Hispanic males, which is 21.0%. So it's really clear to us that the disparity, disparity between white and minorities is significant and it helps to understand where Madison College is and the strategies needed to advance education for our students at the college overall. So as I've set the foundation or the stage really to get us to understand where we are um, when it comes into minority students and some of the diversity, inclusion and equity gaps that we see between our students um, between gender and race and ethnicity, it kind of helps us to truly understand now where are we at when it comes into higher education? What is the world of higher education as it's been impacted by the pandemic? Now, I truly believe um, higher education overall, there are these 12 things um, that institutions are facing um, being impacted by the pandemic. And these things really help to conceptualize where conversations rest for leadership. So when we, and I'm not gonna cover all 12 of these things, but I definitely wanna highlight some of them, which I think are really, really important and, and um, critical to note as we're thinking about higher education overall. One, thinking about crisis or student crisis and support. Higher education has seen an increase in mental health related needs for both students and staff. So there is, efforts that are being provided and support systems that are in place, um, both from coming from the national level um, and from the Department of Education truly to address the need to support students with me mental health um, concerns or challenges. Online education, of course, a new demand or appreciation for being in the online space has become critical and now one that all institutions must work into their long-term plans. Prior to the pandemic, online education was an option for students. Um, and then also it was an option for institutions. With the pandemic overall, it has now forced institutions that prided themselves on in-person educational modalities in a sense to now 
explore what that online education platform is and how to shape that experience for students. Um, so it's really, really critical to have that ingrained in the structure of higher education overall. Um, the financial state of institutions, the pandemic has caused many institutions to rethink their delivery and their strategy. Some have been forced to actually close. Some institutions have began to merge different campuses. It could be on the state level um, or a system level where they've merged campuses in order to equate to the need of that particular institution or the systems that they are operating in. Of course, the value of the college degree has always been a conversation, but it's been more on the um, forefront now as students are really thinking about, is college really for me? Do I technically need a college degree in order to accomplish what I want to accomplish within life? Um, on the two-year technical college sector, that's a little bit different because we provide hands-on training and learning that allows students to get um, right into the job force and into the market to make a living wage versus in a sense going to a four-year degree where you're acquiring the knowledge to be placed into a particular profession. So it gives you an idea of that. Um, the, uh, say the hit on the community college, because the recession pushed students to community colleges in the past, we are finding this isn't to be the case now that we've been impacted by the pandemic. Um, the community college or the two-year school actually has seen a decline nationally with enrollment across the country because many have equated this to not be a residential type of experience for the student. So many students that are coming back to college now, they're trying to find that true college experience or gleaming for that true college experience where they're staying on campus uh, being in, integrated within the whole campus culture. So it's created an interesting perspective for the two-year institution overall and what we can provide to that student experience overall and that benefit for them to get a degree or a credential from our institutions. And it, it makes it really, really interesting for us because it allows us to be creative and create environments in a sense that truly cater to the student's culture or campus culture experience while they're attending our institutions. Now, there are, of course, other things that are listed here, and I won't share all of them, but one thing that I do want to note before I conclude on this particular slide is as far as the most notable, which is faculty and staff burnout. The pandemic has forced institutions, one, to move quickly, to transform their educational delivery models. And with that involve changes in services. So it forced staff to provide more, maintain their current support structures while also dealing with personal situations such as childcare, their own health within their, with themselves and with their family, and also try to incorporate a work-life balance. So it has um, caused an, an unusual toll on faculty and staff, as well as students um, in the higher education platform and perspective, where a lot of flexibilities and changes within higher education have been pushed down from the top level education wise to the institutions who now had to adjust very quickly and adapt and provide strategies and structures based off all of the challenges. So I, I always think that it is really, really important to understand where we are in higher education um, so that individuals can understand the challenges and the opportunities that we have for students as we're moving forward to educate them, okay? So I believe that we saw changes when it comes into diversity, equity, and inclusion based off of various activities or events that has happened within society. So with the killing of George Floyd, and other situations that contributed to awareness of equity, inclusion, and inequality in the country, many institutions placed additional emphasis on diversity, equity, um, and inclusion work overall. So for the sake of our conversation today, I wanted to make sure that we were um, all on the same page as far as um, understanding of these terms and that based off of this information, we can move forward to understand how Madison College has adjusted and provided opportunities to move forward to push 
um, our diversity, inclusion, and equity um, activities and planning and strategies forward, okay? I won't necessarily read these. They are here on the screen for you, um, but I want to make sure that this information was provided as a resource as we continue our conversations. So when we think about some of the work that's been done at Madison College, we have a vice president of equity and inclusion who is Lucia Nunez. Um, she birthed four guiding principles or goals for the Madison College community. Um, the first is that Madison College will eliminate racist policies, practices, and procedures to achieve more equitable outcomes. Um, this is really key because it really focuses on providing opportunities for both the student and employees to engage in focused conversations. Um, some of those hard conversations to truly understand perspectives, understand backgrounds, understand um, biases that are out there from students and out there from employees to find out how can we move the needle forward to be able to support all of our students and our staff that are ingrained in the Madison College culture. The second principle or the goal is that students of color and traditionally underrepresented populations persist and succeed at greater rates in order to achieve more equitable outcomes. So as I shared previously, our minority students are persisting and retaining or being retained at lower rates than their peers. So reasons vary, of course, but primarily finding ways to build community um, is core of keeping students enrolled and supporting them along the journey is critical. So finding those opportunities that they feel a part of the college campus and the climate is critical for their success. The third goal or principle here is that employee demographics will mirror student um, demographics. So if our students don't see people who look like them and share similar experiences, it is challenging for them to persist and connect with the institution. Research has said that students who are from underrepresented backgrounds or minority students thrive better when they are able to interact and engage with other individuals that share similar backgrounds. So that's why it's critical for us to be able to mirror our demographics as Madison College staff with our student demographics um, as well. So I shared that we're roughly about 30% um, minorities at Madison College. So we are moving forward um, day to day in a sense to infuse strategies that will improve um, our more minority um, staffing model at the college to support our students overall. And of course, finally, the last um, goal here is that every employee, every student, and every guest will experience a welcoming and inclusive Madison College experience. And now it's important that all of our partners understand and know that they are welcome at Madison College, regardless of their backgrounds, regardless of their preferences, affiliations, or other things. We want to make sure that everyone that interacts with Madison College and step foot on any of our campuses um, have that welcoming and inclusive um, opportunity and experience with us. That's very, very critical. And it is definitely one of the top priorities, which is why it was included in the equity and inclusion plan. So when I think about overall, as far as this overall um, arching goals of the equity and inclusion plan, it trickles down to the various areas within our college. It has been charged that every area, every department um, develop their own equity and inclusion goal or goals in order to contribute to the overall overarching um, goals of the college. So the areas that I oversee as far as in student access and success, um, we have done that as well. And I wanna share that with you because it helps to identify and connect some of the student services side and how we are basically shifting to ensure that we are contributing to um, the experiences of our students and also our staff. So 
the next couple of slides, I think I have about two slides here that I want to share with you, is going to share that programming that is critical for us um, as we look at um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So overall, we really want to make sure that all areas have created an environment of learning um, to increase awareness and systemic racism and what makes it impactful to our students and staff. So being able to have that dialogue and learn more about those challenges have been really, really critical to us. It has created an opportunity to have some of those, um, I would say challenging or eye-opening conversations to truly connect where we are overall as an institution and staff as we're addressing and serving students that might be impacted by the various social challenges and systemic um, challenges within our institution and external of our institution. Um, areas like our academic advising is evaluating how underserved or underrepresented students are satisfied within our service models to improve that experience for students. Um, the financial aid team is looking for or looking at students who do not complete processes, understanding that first generation or underrepresented students typically um, are the ones in a sense that get lost in the processes and need additional support for completing those processes. Our career and employment um, unit is focusing on efforts to create opportunities in employment or in internship um, participation, which is ultimately going to improve the economic success for those students and allow them to be um, to experience employability at a greater um, success rate versus in since their peers who participate in the various internships or participation uh, programs that we have through them. In addition to this, we have um, our Scholars of Promise program. So it's one that focuses on providing support to graduating high school students within Madison College District who basically believe that college in a sense is, was not in their reach, but we provide opportunity to say that it is in their reach and we wanna support them um, by in a sense providing scholarship funding that they don't have to worry about their tuition and fees during their first couple of years of education at Madison College. But specifically, um, this program is aiming to increase students of color applicants by 10% with a focus on the Black and Latinx male student population. That is one that we have discovered um, that has a higher need at Madison College is those Black and Latinx students. So we're providing intentional um, programming and intentional engagement uh, with those populations in order to accomplish this goal. Of course, we want to create opportunities for our students of color and being able to connect them to opportunities outside of Madison. Madison College does um, pride itself and make opportunities for transfer agreements and articulation agreements with other institutions to provide those opportunities when students decide that they want to transfer to another institution. But specifically, we want to focus or we are focusing on that historically black college and university partnership by bringing them in to have some of those conversations with our students. We're finding out or we have found out that a lot of our students that are that are coming to Madison College don't necessarily know of the HBCU experience and that opportunity to go to one of those institutions as they're transferring. So we're evaluating data and providing opportunities for those institutions to partner with us in order to increase that transfer rate for those students and for them to get a different cultural experience by going to those other four-year institutions. And of course, this year or for the past, actually three to four years, we have been looking at ways to transform the student experience. And by doing that is incorporating a platform that truly looks at the academic success and planning of students um, when they're looking at their degree completion through a platform or a tool called Navigate. So specifically, our academic advising services units is looking at key demographic groups 
um, to provide proactive support and outreach to truly impact the student persistence and retention rates that I shared previously. So this is totally different from what we've done in the past. And it's something specifically that is revolutionizing the way that we engage and interact with our students overall. So as I'm coming to a conclusion, I did want to provide some inclusive programming opportunities and highlight some of the excellent things that we're doing at Madison College overall, as far as some of the larger programs. Um, but a couple of years ago, we introduced the STEM Center, um, which is a program that allows high school juniors and seniors to earn their associate's degree in STEM fields at Madison College in partnership with the um, Madison Metropolitan School District. Um, so right now we have about 200 students in this program that are taking classes at our Goodman South um, campus that is allowing them to earn their associate's degree during their junior and senior year of high school that is catapulting them um, as they're moving forward um, in their educational journey to cut out two years of as far as their college uh, bachelor's degree program and actually have it that it reduces their debt. They don't have to worry about it because these the students that are participating don't have to pay for their tuition. It's all covered through a partnership between Madison College and then also MMSD. So it's, it's amazing work that's being done with those students and they're persisting um, and being retained at um, remarkable rates, well over 90%. Um, for those that are participating in that program. We have another program called the Men of Excellence Program that's dedicated to African-American and Latinx males to truly focus on their academic and their leadership by providing different opportunities for them to engage with other entities um, and experiences outside of Madison College by allowing them to have various mentors that are within the profession that helps to provide some professional growth and professional development. We basically in the program provide different skills and opportunities such as financial literacy, coaching that helps them to be able to plan their academic success, and then also mentorship with other individuals around um, the community. We have Gateway to College, so those students between the ages of 16 to 23 that did not complete their high school um, diploma, by providing them another opportunity in a sense to earn their high school diploma along with college credits. So that HSED, high school equivalency degree, allows them to do that and then continue on to finish and wrap up and get a college degree. So it's, it's a, an amazing program as well that we see many students moving forward and actually coming back to thank us for this opportunity. I won't touch on Scholars of Promise. I've shared some of that information in our prior slide, but I do want to highlight a newer program that we have that actually started this past summer, which is Second Chance Pell. So we partnered with the Department of Education to provide educational programming or add on to our educational program for incarcerated students. We found out that students who were incarcerated that received educational programming um, while incarcerated basically had higher chances um, to be successful as they integrated back into society. So it reduced the recidivism rate, which are those um, individuals that get out and then basically become an offender again and end up going back into uh, being incarcerated. So this program focuses on providing financial support to those students by them earning a credential or degree program. Um, and then also taps into Pell Grant funding for those students and then also helping those students that might have experienced a lap in their payment history. So they might have had student loans before and they felt in default or delinquent in as far as those loans and it has impacted their credit. So this program helps to focus on that and allow them to complete their degree, complete their program, and then also work on positioning them so that they can be successful as they integrate back into society. Um, so we have approximately about 30 students that's participating in this, and it basically grows each term um, that we're basically moving forward with this programming. And it also allows us to provide 
um, great insight to the Department of Education as we're moving forward to, in a sense, release the, the Pell ban on incarcerated students overall in 2023. So it's providing that expertise and that insight to the Department of Education that makes this program even stronger. So overall, that gives you um, some insight into Madison College and some of the things that we are doing to support diversity, equity, and inclusion work at the institution. And of course, to improve as far as um, the persistence and retention of our students of color as they basically um, are integrated into our college culture and to be able to support those students overall. Uh, thank you, uh, I guess, Dr. Alford. Um, thank you so much for your presentation today. That was really interesting. And I think, you know, as being part of the Madison community and especially the South Madison community with the Goodman campus, we, um, are big supporters and fans of the <coughs> Madison College. So it's exciting to hear about all that you're doing there to make ed education more accessible. Aaron, I'd like to say one thing to the doctor about his strengths at the beginning of his talk. The one thing that you're too humble to mention, uh, I'm sure, is the fact that, and I, I talk to hundreds of young people in high school every year and, and lord, uh, laud the, the things you're doing at Madison College because not only is it cheaper, but you're actually getting teachers. You're not getting an idiot like me who is a graduate student first year trying to teach you when I had no idea how to teach and teach you something I have no idea about. And so you're paying $11,000 in a semester to get me. No, that's not fair. They're paying a lot less and they're getting really competent teachers. Absolutely. No, I wasn't. I was incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> At the record show. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I would encourage all of us here to really talk up Madison College and not just the money, but also the fact that they're going to get really good teachers. Yeah, yeah I, I would concur with that. Madison College has stellar faculty and staff that provides educational opportunities to students. And as you, as you stated, we're definitely one in a sense that has um, staff and faculty in it since that's truly prepared in order to advance the educational goals of our students. So it's definitely um, top notch education that students will get from coming to Madison College. So thank you so much for highlighting that as I took the humble approach to share that. <laughs> Aaron, I know we're over yeah. time, but I just wanted to comment that the scholarship committee has designated Madison College as the, the college of choice yes. for our scholarships. And we award $10,000 every year, um, thanks to the generosity of the club and our Brock stand, which we hope to see a lot of your students come down to. Um, and you because we think the money goes so much further at Madison sure. College, kids sure. are getting a great degree and can go on to advanced degrees if they so choose how to support. Did you want to add to that, Randy? No, I, I think I think you said it well. We give our, our selection committee has been instructed by the club to give a very, very strong preference to students who will be attending Madison College. Yep. So. Lynn, Lynn, did you have anything? Yeah, I had a question for all your campuses. Is there a track where they can come in for two years and then um, is it a certain grade point or do they still have to um, apply for one of the universities in the state after that? Yes, a student can come and basically attend any of our campuses. We have some programming at specific campuses that a student will complete their entire program at that particular campus. But a student can basically attend any of our campuses and decide to transfer to any of the partners that we have across the country, not only in Wisconsin, but in other states. Uh, we also have partnerships and articulation agreements with those institutions as well. So they can start anywhere and complete at their um, institution of choice. Great. Well, thank you. Club makes a donation on behalf of all of our speakers to the Polio Plus um, portion of the Rotary International Foundation. And so we'll make that donation in your honor as well. So thank you for speaking to us today and for your awesome work.
uh, for the Rotarians. I will see you guys all next week with our district governor, Ooh. Sharon A. Bear, in attendance. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.